sun is raging. Welcome, race fans, to another episode of The Rubbin' is Racing, Daily Fantasy NASCAR Show. We have all the action from the Brantley Gilbert Big Machine, Big Yard 400, at Indianapolis, the Brickyard, for 160 laps. The stage breakdown this week will be at lap 50, lap 100, and then we race to the checkered. For guys, I think the first time in NASCAR history we have a singer and a production company sponsoring a race, and he even has his album cover on one of the cars. It's exciting. Lear, are you excited about the Brantley Gilbert Big Machine Brickyard 400? I mean, man, uh, as a country music singer, way to step up to the plate, my friend. That's some serious dough right there. Right. I, I don't know. Part of me feels like Garth and, and the other greats never had to put their self on a car, but you know. Yeah. So interesting fact here is NASCAR has raced since 1994 in Indianapolis. Out of 23 races here, there have been 16 wins by Chevrolet, three by Ford, and two by Toyota, which both of those wins are by Kyle Busch in 2015 and 2016. So Chevy has dominated pretty much here, uh, pretty much here at, at Indianapolis. But uh, also interesting is the last time that Ford's got their last win here of those three was back in 1999. 1999, man. Party at Prince's style. Yeah, party at Prince's house back then. <laughs> <laughs> I am so good to work this music and clip it, though. Like. <laughs> all right, kids. We have a chance of thunderstorms all weekend, but hopefully we'll be able to get the rest of practices and qualifying in today, and it will stay dry, as there's only a 15% chance this weekend various times. When we go racing this weekend at 2.30 p.m. Eastern on the network of NBC. We're on the main network this week, so make sure you're not trying to check out NBC Sports. That that won't get it done for you this week. All right, Lear at Indy. I think it's time to do the honors, buddy. Morning, Robert, Indianapolis, Brick Style, kissing them, baby. <laughs> See, I'd went, I'd went kissing those bricks, baby, but that's just me. All right, Lear, who do you have to burn some rubber? Now, guys, before we get into our burning rubber picks, we have watched all of the first practice where we have, what, seven cars that ran five laps and a total of two cars that ran ten laps. So we're doing this mostly off track history and off of our guts and off of season flow this year. So just bear in mind, qualifying does not play, take place until 6.30 p.m. Eastern tonight. So, Lear, with that caveat, who do you have to burn some rubber? Thank you, NASCAR. Much appreciated. I thought for sure last week Kenseth was going to come out and have a dominating performance and get the win at New Hampshire. He was definitely a good fantasy play. He scored 56 points, but unfortunately was not a necessity to have on your lineups to win uh, your GPPs. Uh, but unlike his teammate, Denny Hamlin, uh, in the number 11, who got the win and was definitely a must-own, um, this is another flat track uh, this week at, at uh, Indianapolis, but Kenseth can perform very, very well here uh, on this flat track. This week, he's ninth in cost. He's $9,200. And that car and that team is definitely based off his history. Uh, and that team going into this track with the momentum that they got last week um, is definitely a, a ninth or higher, better car for sure. And it definitely makes him some value. So um, he does not have a win here in 17 starts. He's got eight top fives, 11 top tens. His average start here is 19th with an average finish of 13.2. Uh, in his last four races at Indy, he finished 7th or higher, all while starting 13th or higher. So definitely some good place differential there for uh, Matt Kenseth. Uh, this week, to me, it doesn't matter where Matt Kenseth will start because obviously we don't know that yet. Um, but he's going to be a play for sure. I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, but that momentum that they got with the top five last week, I think they're going to roll that into this week into the race and, you know, go for that win. And after the first practice that we saw, he was in the top three for, um, for where he was at as far as speed. So um, I got some confidence in this team this week, and I'm definitely going to have some exposure on 
the number 20 tied pods car this week. So uh, it's going to be looking orange in, in uh, Indianapolis this weekend. Yeah, uh, no, I love that tie po- the Tide Pod car sponsorship, and I love where JGR is positioning themselves for the back half of the run into the chase. Kenseth looks poised to get one of those seats as long as he keeps racing the way he is. Um, well, not the chase anymore, the playoffs. And I, I have no problem making the Kenseth play. I would probably put the caveat that I want him starting outside the top five, uh, preferably the further back he starts, the better in my opinion. Just because sure. of the stats you gave. I mean, as as long as that car is fast enough to be a top five car, I necessarily don't have a problem playing him in the top five even. And, and let's not forget this either. So, um, you know, we did find out some information this week that Alex Bowman's going to be driving the number 88 full time next year for Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, so that means that, you know, there is one seat less for him to audition for for 2018. So um, pressure's on uh, Matt Kenseth to... Uh, get something done. I mean, I, if I'm a team owner, I want to at least know that you can go through a season and at least, you know, get one win, hopefully. Um, so especially if they're going to take a chance on an older driver. Right. Um, so he's, he's every week uh, that he doesn't do that, he's going to have more and more pressure on him. Right. Because now we're down to two seats left on the premier teams, basically. Um, and that's assuming Danica retires after this year and the Casey Kane's ride frees up as well. But I, uh, Wow. <laughs> it's getting tight for a driver of kids it's quality because then you also too you know you've got all these other younger guys mm-hmm. in the xfinity series like the william bryants and um you know all these other younger guys that are coming up through the ranks and uh, i'm sorry not uh it's william byron right. um not bryant but you know these yeah. younger guys they're pushing to get seats in uh the top tier of the sport and the older guys, you know, they, they've got to come with it or they're not going to find themselves with a seat. Yeah, I just, I can't even believe that we don't have Bubba Wallace a ride. Like, the guy was top five yeah, in the Xfinity one, yeah. Series, and they got promoted. Ran better than Amarola was running all year in that 42, and still doesn't have a ride or a sponsorship. Like, that is just unreal to me. But another thing that's unreal is my burning rubber pick, and we are how many races into this season and we have one JGR win, and it isn't for my boy. I'm going to go ahead, and it should surprise no one, but we're going with the Rowdy himself. I know he's not in the M&M's car. That's why I flipped it around backwards. He's in the Skittles ride, and it is a sweet, sweet Skittles ride. I love that Skittles car. Yes, he's 10500 this week, but he has won the last two races here, including leading 149 laps here last year. He has also only finished outside the top 15 at Indy once, and it's the only race that he didn't finish here on the lead lap. He also has 10 top 10s and 5 top 5s in 12 races at the Brickyard. Look, kids, it doesn't get much more chalky than Rowdy this week, but in my opinion, people that aren't playing him as good as he looked already in practice and as good as he looked in Xfinity Series practice He's going to be the driver that you want to have this week. This is just his track. And I I don't think we have to worry about Truex like normal because Truex just doesn't run well here traditionally. Now, that may change over the practices today, and if it does, we'll definitely let you know on the YouTube page. But as of now, I think that Rowdy is the easy chalk, and I, I'm going to be all over Rowdy this week. Lear, your thoughts? I mean, if I had to make a choice between the number 18 or 78, uh, I mean, I'm definitely going with, uh, you know, Rowdy over Truex just because, I mean, Truex, just, his stats here are pretty garbage. Um, but when it comes to Kyle Busch, I mean, he has shown that this is his track, especially in that red Skittles car, because both times that he's won here, it's been in that Skittles car. But, um you know, it, it, it's just that time where it just feels right, where this is the, the point in the season where Kyle Busch finally gets the monkey off his back and gets into the playoffs for sure. 10500 is Kyle Busch's cost this week, but you're going to be looking at, you know, Truex is number one with $100 more, $10,600. Um, but again, 2017 is a different year than 16, 15, 14. Um, so, that number 78 team has all the momentum going into this race. And you could already see that with them, you know, being in the top three, I think it was second in, in first practice. Um, but it's going to be one of those where he's definitely going to probably qualify in the top five. Uh, when I, when it comes to Truex, 
And I, I think Kyle Busch definitely, uh, he wasn't up there when it came to the qualifying, but um, I think he's got a shot at getting on the pole here. And if he does, I mean, no doubt in my mind, he goes out just like last year and leads a bunch of laps. And here at this race, it's going to be all about place differential because we only have 160 laps. Um, so uh, w- when it comes to the fact of having, um, you know, overtime, of course you can get, you know, four, three or four more laps out of that, but um, it's going to be all about the place differential guys this week. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to choose a dominator, Kyle Bush is definitely one to put in your repertoire. No, and I think that's a really good point. It's traditionally we don't have like hardcore dominators at this track. Um, Andy functions a lot like uh, a lot like Daytona and uh, and Talladega in the sense that usually you have guys that are leading 20, 30 lap chunks. So it, it's very uncommon for somebody to just dominate Indy in a in a Sprint Cup. Uh, well, wow, Sprint Cup car in a Monster Energy Cup car. Uh, I just I don't see a dominator happening, especially with the stage breakdowns, unless right. it's unless it's Rowdy, Truex, or Larson. I mean, those are the only three guys that, in my opinion, are capable of doing it in the stage format either. So, but mean, before we before we move on, real quick to our our next segment, what are your thoughts on? Um, are we going to get any? Because we've had. Uh, pretty much every week this year has been something to where somebody fails inspection, somebody, um, you know, has a, a mechanical issue, um, but somebody big is going to start from the rear. Do you think that happens this weekend? I mean, I can't, I can't foresee uh, qualifying and inspection failures, but I mean, pretty much every race we've had somebody and pretty much every race has been Kyle Larson. So if somebody, if somebody does fail, I would assume it would be, Kyle Larson or somebody from Team Hendrick would be my guess. <laughs> those yeah. are those are seem to be the people that constantly fail. And I will put it this way: from the from NAS from fantasy NASCAR's purposes, I would rather have everybody get through tech or a bunch of good cars not getting through tech. So people have to make up their minds. I like I I miss fantasy NASCAR being a sport of skill instead of everybody having like two clear obvious choices like last week. And yep. Truex and Larson and just everybody playing them. I mean, what was it? 68% of lineups had the combo of the two of them last week. So I, I'd prefer us to get back to actual thought-provoking lineup setting. And, you know, but we'll, we shall see if everybody gets through inspection. It's all, the, it's all the other teams, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. And um, I, I'm right there with you. I, I would much rather have that scenario as well because it then puts the emphasis back on the – fantasy players to make the correct decisions uh, when it comes to making that ultimate lineup. And when you have a free square, like, you know, one of the bigger boys going towards the rear, I mean, it's just no brainer. And, um, you know, I I don't know what the percentages are, but um, I would at least say, you know, eight out of 10 times that that play is going to pay off, you know, barring some crazy scenario. So it makes it easier and then shrinks down the percentages of variance. So that's why we've had so many different, uh, GPPs and, and um, the qualifiers and stuff um, have uh, multiple, multiple lineups of the same, even though the field sizes are, are smaller. Yeah, been a little crazy. All right, Lear, it's time for value. Who do you have to save us some money this week, buddy? Well, I'm hoping that uh, none of our viewers are going to call me crazy, um, but um, I'm going to be going with a guy that's been on pretty much a snide for a month or so, but as, you know, been rumored to not have a ride next season um so pressure's getting on him as well and i always kind of like to incorporate the uh you definitely have to use the information uh on scenarios that are it's actually happening in nascar to pick your fantasy drivers because uh, regardless of if that's garage talk or stuff that you hear on twitter or uh, whatever but i'm gonna be going with casey kane um he's pretty much like i said had a tough 2017 campaign so far and looking for another ride in in 2018 in my opinion um but he has some of the the best equipment obviously with hendrick and has been putting up uh you know pretty decent uh results in fantasy nascar uh in years past but dude this year has just been it's either he's been caught up in a wreck or just just hasn't performed Mm -hmm. but um you know as far as he qualifies out of his mind like a top 10 this week. Uh, I'm definitely going to halter my love for him. 
but his cost this week makes him enticing at $7,900. He's been in that kind of range of 78, 79, uh, 7,700, but um, he has a positive place differential uh, in five of his last races here, all finishing positive. Um, he's got some pretty decent history. Uh, he's led 70 laps a few years back in 2014. And um, I think this week he has a chance of actually being a play. Uh, you'll get value out of him because I think he's going to have a lower ownership percentage. Uh, and definitely with his recent history here in the last month, fantasy owners are very, very sour on him. Um, because the last week he got negative five, week before that, negative nine points. And then three weeks ago, 15 points and then 20 points. So the last two weeks he's been in the negative and that's going to make fantasy owners really hesitant on picking him as a play. You know, Indianapolis is one of those tracks where he does really, really well at. And I'm telling you right now, play him. If he finishes the race, he's definitely going to pay dividends on your fantasy team. So uh, I'm going to have a healthy ownership of, of Kane this week, I think. Fair enough. I get where your argument's at on King, and I like your game. Soured a lot of the fantasy community. My problem is, especially pre-qualifying, Casey Kane has had a huge problem over-qualifying this year for where that car can run, and where, at least for where he's running that car. And until I see qualifying, I, that, that's just not a guy that I'm going to be on. I would rather be on all the RCR cars that seem to be qualifying week in and week out in the 30s and then finish in the teens. Right, the Ty Dillons, the Austin Dillons, yeah. the Ryan Newmans, um, and they're all cheaper than Casey Kane. So unless Casey Kane is starting near the back, uh, like a dream scenario would be that he doesn't pass inspection. I would love to roster Casey Kane, and I think he's got a potential to have a good finish here. I just think it's really important to pay attention to where he qualifies because he is a guy that likes to go backwards, and that's I mean that's why you're on him game theory wise. And that's why I, I understand your arguments, and I think they're solid. I just, dude, it, before qualifying, I can't recommend that guy, right? But well, if, and that's what I'm saying. And like, I, you know, if he has a top five qualify uh, no. start, no, I, I'm not touching him. But <laughs> if he's, you know, 14th or higher, um, you know, even then some people are going to be like, well, maybe 14th is still too high. But listen, listen to this, people. Uh, last year, he started 26th, finished 18th. The year before that, 27th, finished 24th. Um, 2014, started 10th, finished 6th. And in 2013, when they went to the new aero package, um, he started 7th and went to 3rd. So in the last five races, he's finished with positive place differential. Yeah. So even if he has that starting top 14 or 15 position, in my opinion, he's a play because uh, I think a lot of the fantasy owners are just – kind of over him and I think he's going to be overlooked and under owned and that's going to be a separator for you yeah all right guys I am going to take my value play now and this is something I haven't got to do pretty much the whole season because uh, you, well you'll hear why in a second I am recommending Matty DB at 5400 and I'm going to give you a two for here and I'm going to tell you to play Michael McDowell at 5900 the reason why is since we're filming before qualifying, I can actually recommend both these guys because at this point, they haven't actually over-qualified to the point where you can't play them. And I love these guys as value drivers. They're both my favorite value drivers and have won me a lot of money. The problem is, is they aren't starting far enough back to win me that money this year. And I really want to talk about them and hopefully that turns things around for some of my lineups. If maybe we can get these guys qualified in the back so we can get some positive place differential. But on a serious note, guys, if either one of these guys qualify like they've been doing in the 20s, in the high tw in the like low 20s, or in the teens, fade once again. But if, if we get a low 20s, like 30s qual out of these guys, feel free to plug and play. And I, I'm hoping, hoping we get some Matty DB and some Michael McDowell love this week and they have some poor qualifying efforts. I just, I long for the day. When both of those cars couldn't qualify. Don't you, Lear? Well, heck yeah, man. I love <laughs> both of those teams. And the crazy part is, so McDowell's raced here seven times. His average starting position is 32nd. His average finishing position is 32nd.14. <laughs> and Matty DB, or they call him Matt DiBurrito, um, has two races here. Average start, 35th. Average finish, 36th. So, 
maybe the averages will come into play this week and we'll get them starting in the 30s and be able to plug and play them this week. So, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely ready for the day where we don't see these guys qualifying in the teens and early 20s because then that just takes them right out of being potential plays. Um, and then it, you know, forces you to take some of those other guys that are also been kind of a crapshoot. But I mean, kind of a side note, but Jeffrey Earnhardt's been quite a, quite a decent play as far as fantasy owners this year um, because he's always starting from that, you know, 36, 37, 38 position. And just by default with Rex and everything else, he moves up. So he always is like a good pick for, you know, 10, 15, sometimes even 20 points. Um, But uh, yeah, as as far as that goes, it's all going to really depend on who qualifies where later on today. And, uh, you know, see who's going to be uh, that value that we're all going to need to incorporate into our lineups. But, um, you know, when it comes down to the smaller uh, teams and the lower tiered guys, you know, um, Di Burrito is at 5,400 and Michael McDowell's at 5,900. You know, it's, it's going to be one of those to where maybe this week you kind of go off the grid and pick a J.J. Yaley. Uh, oh, I was just going to say that. <laughs> or a, a Joey Gase or, you know, something like that. So, uh, but those are going to be the filler guys that you're going to have to choose to um, make yourself separate unless you want to go pretty much middle of the tier and become a, a, a pick the average guys. Um, so, but with 160 laps, um, it's all about that place differential. All right. Now, it's just a rumor at this point in time, but uh, the rumor is, is that BK Racing is maybe folding after this Indy race. Does that make you want to stay away from the BK Racers this week and play a J.J. Yelly instead if you're going for the extreme punt, Larry? I, I'm on the side of I would rather play J.J. Yelly than either one of those BK cars at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's always stinks when, you know, these teams, it costs so much money to run these these organizations. And mm-hmm. when they're getting thin on – on the funds to give their drivers the the necessary equipment and everything that they need need to be successful. Um, But, you know, on the other hand too, maybe it makes them inspired to go out and, um, you know, have a great performance, but you're only as good as your equipment, obviously in this sport. So um, when you don't have the funds to put it into, you know, putting together a great race car, uh, then it reflects itself on the track. So uh, no, I'm right there with you. I I think this week um, I'm uh, one of those where, um, I don't know. I, I like the drivers, but um, it's all about the equipment. So, um, but that's uh, some unfortunate news, obviously, if, if that's going to be the case. But just a heads up, JJ Yelly is hot, wet garbage at this track. I believe he has three <laughs> consecutive finishes of 38th or 39th place. So just a heads up, <laughs> it might not be the play you want to make, but when you're scraping the bottom of the barrel in the sense of uh, equipment, you know, you never know what you're going to get. Like, and so it's sort of dart throwing at that level with those guys equipment. Oh yeah. All right. Now, since we're pre-qualifying, I don't think it's fair for us to send anybody to the garage. Um, nobody's really, really angered us so far this week. Lear, you don't have anybody angry. I think it's better for us to spend this time talking more about some strategy for this weekend before we get into the, into our lineup build. Lear, what kind of strategy are you looking at this week for the Brickyard? Well, honestly, man, um, you know, most of these tracks, uh, especially with all these segment implementations, we've had multiple dominators that you have to be owned uh, on your teams in order for you to be uh, a high-scoring team. And I think I'm going to roll with that strategy again this week just because of the segments. It really jostles and changes things up. Um, but, you know, it, it's very common that we have the segment leaders uh, lead most of those segments. So, uh, obviously, last week you had Truex lead the first segment. Then you had Rowdy lead the second one. Um, so, both of those were, uh, you know, drivers that, that you had to have on your team to take down the uh, – tournaments last week so i'm gonna go with that same kind of strategy but um you know when that comes to picking these types of drivers you're gonna have to pick the big boys obviously the ones that uh start on the pole and the the ones that you know can start maybe a little bit back in in the top 10 but also have the speed to move up um so that's gonna be my strategy and then i'm gonna go with a couple middle tier guys because um 
I think that the, the larger teams are going to have the success here uh, with this being uh, such a large track. And what a historic track that this is that we're racing at. And then unfortunately, the only race here once a year. But um, um, I'm, I'm definitely going to be kind of going with a two top tier guys. So somebody that's 9,500 or more, two of those drivers. And then a, cu- a couple probably mid-tier guys, uh, I would say, you know, the 8,600 to, you know, $7,600 range, somewhere in there, um, and do a couple of those guys. At least one punt, probably, um, just to save on some salary. And then, um, you know, pick a, another driver that uh, has some great place differential, maybe somebody that starts – you know, 25 or, or higher, uh, between 25 and 32, somewhere in there. Yeah, no, I think, I think the strategy I'm going after this week is going to be a, what, like try to figure out who, if someone's going to dominate this race. Um, right now I'm sort of leaning towards Rowdy dominating, at least at a clip where I have to own him. And then, and then basically place differential out from there. And I don't care what their salary is or whatever. I'm going for the best possible place differential guys. Even though passing is harder on this track, I I think that there at least if practice times are any indication, there's going to be a lot of good drivers starting towards the back. As practice two is going on, while we're filming this, I'm trying to watch it and and update while we're filming. Um, yeah, I just I, I think the key is going to be place differential. And I think there's going to be a lot of landmines that you're going to want to avoid. I mean, right now in practice, too, we've got a ton of big names in the 20s range. I mean, Harvick's not running fast in the teens uh, compared to where he normally runs. This could be really interesting to stack with superstars of place differential and do a punt. Or it might be where you're wanting to go more Lear strategy, take just two of the guys and even it out. Like, it, it might be one of those weeks I, I can't tell which way I'm leaning right now. I think I'm going to go one one dominator possibly or even not worry about a dominator and just go solidly after play some original and who I have winning the race. Also, too, I, I, one thing I want to point out is, you know, you also have to look at some of the other drivers that people just kind of, um, they have, su- you know, such a, a blinders on to the big names. Mm-hmm. And then, but I, I mean, don't forget about guys like, Eric Jones, um, Daniel Suarez, AJ Allmendinger, Ty Dillon, Paul Menard has done very well here at this track. Um, so, like, I, I think, uh, especially like last week, um, you know, a lot of people were under the the strategy of taking the big names and then punting with some of the other ones, where it was kind of a you had to play the other guys that were uh, low owned, and hopefully you didn't own Eric, Eric Jones last week. Some of these guys that are those names like Eric Jones and Suarez are, you know, qualifying in the top 10. um, But people are, you know, basically avoiding them because they, you know, uh, because they are rookies. But um, no, those guys are definitely, you know, especially for a separator in a tournament. Those those are the kind of plays you want to make. I agree, dude. Here's one thing that we haven't talked about that I want to talk about real quick before we get into the lineup build. All right, dude, we've got Sticky Ricky at Indy. He is way underpriced for the kind of driver he is. Indy yeah. is the – it's not a restrictor play track yet, but it functions as close to one as possible as sort of the super – as a super speedway. Do you like the Ricky Stenhouse play this week? I haven't heard a whole lot of people talking about it. And now Actually, he, he is in the I, gut rot Sunny D, like <laughs> – I mean, all the writing's on the wall, but yeah, I mean, the guys won both Daytona races, and depends on where he qualifies at, but yeah, I've been, ever since he's gotten those wins, that team has just had a different uh, aura about them, and they're definitely walking in, um, you know, the gates of the racetracks with a lot more confidence, and it's it's really showing when, uh, like last week, um, he got caught up and, and came back and had a decent finish, and you know, he's been qualifying in the mid-teens, and I'm hoping here that he does the same thing if he's, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19. Um, if he gets higher than that, I mean, the higher he goes, the more I'm going to own him. So right. um, I, I think he's definitely a, a, a good play for sure. Well, oh, and I also want to say don't sleep on the Bane train, kids. He's always under owned, and if he's starting towards the back, like Bane is a great place differential guy. Um, solid lineup 
construction. Like, you know what I mean? I the the problem with Bane is usually he's too high priced to fit in when you want to fit him in a lineup. Yeah. But I don't know that that's the case this weekend. All right, kids. Now it's time for the segment of the show where we put together a lineup. Now remember, this is not for the purposes of giving you a lineup. This is for the purposes of letting you compete against the lineup and see the, well, maybe the proper process if we're right. <laughs> if we're wrong, it may be a dumpster fire of a process. Lear, are we starting off with Rowdy? I think both of us want to go that way. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. All right, so we will start this off with Rowdy at 10-5. That leaves 7-9. Where are we going now, Lear, since I took the Rowdy play? Personally, man, my opinion is, you know, I, I really I really like this team. Now JGR is off the schneid as an organization for wins, thanks to Denny Hamlin. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think you got to roll Kenseth, man, and stay on the JGR train. No, well, I, I have zero problems with that. I, I totally get your strategy. And uh, to be honest, I have no problem if – Granted, guys, this is pre-qualifying, so I, I reserve the right to trash this lineup, and I'll announce it. <laughs> I will announce it on the YouTube channel if I trash this lineup. But assuming that theory is true, uh, I don't know how I accidentally put Joey Logano on that team. But anyways, I would also add probably Eric Jones at 8,500, seeing where he's practicing at, hoping that he's going to have a subpar qualifying effort. And let's just kind of saddle up the JGR and affiliates and roll with it. You cool with that? Or do you yeah, think sounds good, man. Spends too much money at 85. All right, so we have $7,266 left over. Where do you want to go? Let's stick with that gut rot, bro. <laughs> Sticky Ricky in the sunny D. Oh, man. God. <laughs> the gut rot. Uh, it's such a true story, though. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> yeah, especially today. I, I don't know where everybody's at. Hopefully... Uh, this nice sunny day, but uh, we are getting potential temps over a hundred degrees, which I'm sure it's uh, very similar across at least the Midwest here. But um, you know, hopefully, you guys are out there staying cool today and the rest of the weekend. <laughs> at least stay hydrated. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with Sunny D. <laughs> yes, there you go. Just don't drink it too fast, or you will get the gut rot. Yes, true story. All right, so we've got Rowdy, Kenseth, Jones, Sticky Ricky, and we've got $7,400 per driver left. I Which wanna... is still a healthy amount. Right. And, and that, that gives you so many different options to go up and above and get somebody or uh, go two middle tiers or however you want to roll it, uh, but it gives you options. Dude, you know what, bro? I think we just JGR it out. Let's Suarez it up. 7K left, man. You can pick any driver you want uh, below 7K. So, dinger on down. Honestly, I, I really like what this kid's been doing um, this season in his first full-time ride. And I know it doesn't leave much disposal when it comes to the more that you leave on the board, the, the less similar lineups that you'll get. Um, but, again, it's all about points, baby. And uh, I think this kid's going to – uh, do the same that he's done all year. He's going to have a semi-decent qualifying position, probably 25th or higher. Uh, but I think he definitely will have a top 20 car, and uh, I'm, I'm, my pick would be for Ty Dillon. Yeah, no, dude, I, I absolutely love the Ty Dillon play. Him and Menard both are basically in the same team equipment, and they both tend to qualify very poorly and march through the And pack. this is Menard's only win of his career is here at Indianapolis. Right. But if you wanted to leave more money on the board, you can play Menard. If you want to leave yeah. less, play Dylan. Since we've already got all the youngins on the team, let's go ahead and throw Dylan on there. And like I said, guys, without qualifying data and with half of practice two done, this lineup could be hot wet garbage that I demand to change later. But I mean, <laughs> as of now, we're on a JGR train with Sticky Ricky and Ty Dylan, which <clears throat> this is more projecting where these guys are going to qualify. Hopefully we're right. If not, eh, you know, we can talk it out in, <laughs> on the YouTube page, kids. Oh, yeah. With that said, thanks for tuning in. Remember, guys, don't copy the lineup. We're not about lineup builders or selling lineups. We're trying to teach people the proper process to play NASCAR because it's better when we grow the community together and teach everybody how to play properly, right? Just because I, like, I can give you a recommendation of a play doesn't mean it's necessarily the right play. 
But if we talk about the proper processes and talk about the proper way to play, then you, you can do that on your own. And that's the goal of this show is to try to teach you that information while talking about NASCAR and fantasy and hanging out and, and just kicking it NASCAR style with my boy Lear. So Lear, say your goodbyes, buddy, and get us out of here, man. Well, I hope you guys all have a great weekend. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, as far as the qualifying tonight. And it should be fun to watch and see what happens tomorrow. Um, good luck to everybody out there. Uh, I won't be watching the race tomorrow. I'll be at the, uh, the K watching my boys in blue. Nice, uh, nice jersey there, Papa. Oh, yeah, the Bo Jackson throwback, baby. There you go. <laughs> but uh, be out there for Marvel Day at the K. So uh, hanging out with a bunch of people in um, right. costumes on a 100-degree day should Dude, be a good time. You could not pay me money to dress in costume <laughs> cosplay style and go to a 100-plus-degree baseball game. Yeah, no, uh, sir. Right in the middle of the afternoon. It's going to be fantastic. Oh, uh, dude. I, I feel bad. I, I'm, like, melting just wearing the jersey in an air-conditioned house from going out earlier. <laughs> right. But that, I will say the one benefit is that you get a Captain America bar, the shield, the red parts taken out, and they put light blue for the Royals, so that's going to be pretty cool. But um, but should be a, a fantastic race tomorrow. I'm definitely going to DVR it, watch it later. And then when we get done with the Royals game, open up my phone and find out that I took down the qualifier and I will have a fantastic weekend. So, um, but uh, thanks again, everybody, for, for watching out there. Uh, we, we definitely appreciate you watching, uh, spreading the love for the show. Uh, we look forward to doing it every single week and uh, we always love the interaction. And uh, have a great weekend, guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, sorry we didn't take down that qualifier seat last week. I was in first place for three quarters of the race. I don't know what to do. I, I, <laughs> and I finished seventh and eighth. Yeah. <laughs> right. And Lear had a great finish as well. Um, one of these days, we're going to get an actual seat to the like, to the back, to the big boy. Um, hopefully, it's this weekend. Please make some money, kids. Hopefully, you enjoyed the show. Tune in next week for some more fantasy goodness. And until then, later, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, everybody. <laughs>